see what Hector and I have come here today to do is ask you one burning question, and that's this. How many of you really are surprised that the government waited to the last second to end the shutdown? Anybody? No. When it comes to our business, you know, we're used to things like that because the powers that be routinely throw a monkey wrench into the works from time to time, don't they? Only when they do it, when Google does it, they don't call it a shutdown, do they? What do they call it? They call it an update. An update. <laughs> But basically it works the same way, doesn't it? I mean, one day, you know, you're the master of the universe and the next day you're lost in cyberspace, you know. And wouldn't it be great if somebody would come up with a system that would enable you to bulletproof your web presence so you didn't have to get whipped around every time the internet or the search engines decided to shake out the rug? Wouldn't that be great? How many people would like to do that? Yeah. All right. But the problem is, in order to do that, you have to understand three things. The first thing you have to understand is, where did the web come from? The second thing you have to understand is, where is it going? And third, and most importantly, you've got to answer this question. What the heck does WWW really mean? Anybody? What do you think it means? World Wide Web. Well, World Wide Web. I've heard some people call it the Wild Wild West. But for the majority of businesses, you know what it really means? Why doesn't it work? Because 95% of small businesses have little or no presence on page one of the search engines. It's a fact. It's actually probably a bigger number than that now. I mean, it was, every day we get more and more websites, the number gets smaller and smaller, and smaller. Yeah, and the problem is, how can you hope to keep up with the internet when it's constantly reinventing itself, isn't it? I mean, think about it, right? Remember, how many of you have been working the web since, like, the year 2000? Anybody? Well, remember back then, you could set it and forget it. You'd build a website maybe every two or three years because the only thing that was important was having a website and a search engine, right? Back then, there were no blogs, there were no social nets. Forget video, you could, you could hardly stream graphics back then. Right. There wasn't enough bandwidth to download the video in the first place. Blogs didn't exist, and you didn't have to publish anything weekly because people weren't reading blogs. No. But social media didn't yeah. exist. But today, you've got all these other things, and guess what? Failure is not an option. These are no longer optional. If you really want to get any traction on the search engines, you've got to not only have these, you've got to feed them on a regular basis. This is the web as we see it today. As a matter of fact, if you see those other gears, the unnamed ones, there's a whole bunch of unnamed ones out there. So if you're not doing all of these things, you're not making Google happy. Yeah, and, and Google really controls the web for the most part today. Well, you kind of took the words out of my mouth. But when you come down to it today, there really are five essential elements of online marketing, aren't there? First one is search, and there's two flavors. This isn't Baskin Robbins, you only have two flavors. You got paid and unpaid. So what we call organic and then paid. There's YouTube videos, right? Blogging, Blogging which we talked about. Hector's favorite is? Social media. That's right. And then last but not least, Touch marketing. That's, that's really, those are really the secret weapons today of the, of the internet. If you're working all those successfully and feeding them, some of course you have to feed them daily, some weekly, some monthly, but if you are providing valuable content on a regular basis, really that's what it takes to work the web to win today. Okay, now how many of you in here really think you have a really good bead on what it takes to work the web to win? How many people got page one position for whatever it is they're working on? Organically. I'm not paying for it. And I don't mean the name of your company. <laughs> they type in your name. <laughs> that, that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about for your keywords that you're really fighting for. Yeah. And, and what's the reason that we go through all this stuff, all this trouble? Well, mainly because there's, there's this 800-pound gorilla in the room called Google that currently controls more than 80% of search. I mean, that's almost monopoly. Yeah, and that's network and non-network. I mean, so they control the bulk of all internet. I mean, I'm a big Yahoo guy, and Yahoo gets a big, like, 6%. Yeah, and Bing is like one and a half. In fact, Google has, <laughs> is so popular that it's actually not only a noun, it's a verb, isn't it? I mean, as, as successful and powerful as, as you know, uh, Steve Jobs and Apple computers, have you ever heard of anybody appling it? No, not happening. But everybody Googles it, right? Okay. That's how powerful they've become. But the problem is, is that 97% of the people who actually surf the web do not go beyond page one. As a matter of fact, 67% never go below the fold. So if you have a laptop, they don't even scroll down. <laughs> so if you're not above the fold and you're trying to get business on the internet, you're out of luck. Yeah, and if you're not on page one, you're pretty much not in the game at all. all right. 
All right. So, and the problem is, is as Google consolidates its position, I mean, this has been going on for the last few years because of the fact that you've, right now you've got right, right around 380 million websites online and 130,000 new sites came online today. And everybody wants to be on Google page one, right? How many, how many actual opportunities are there on page one? How many listings are there? Even if you include the paid listings, maybe 20, 24? 20, 20, 30. Tops. Yeah. Okay, so do the math. And because of that fact, where before, like I said, during the 90s and early 2000s, you could literally, we could get you onto page one in as little as 24 hours. The average today is four to six months. And not only that, if, if you couldn't get on page one for one, you could get on page one for another one. So you really want stuck, but now, this is the game. It's there called the one. funnel effect, okay? Everybody's trying to funnel that one big search engine. And of course, there are some ways that you can get into the game a little faster, aren't so How there? many people want to know some shortcuts? Right. Shortcuts are good? Shortcut number one, pay to play. Anybody here do AdWords campaigns? I know a few people in the room do. But you know what the problem with AdWords is, right? What, what's the nature of the beast? It's pay per click. It's not pay per sale, is it? It's not pay per sign up, is it? It's not pay per lead, it's pay per click. Yeah, and the problem is, not only can prospects click on the link, who else can? Competitors. Absolutely, and they do. And they do that. Uh, and you know, that's the problem is a lot of people that have gotten into AdWords, they tell us, well, it doesn't work. Because you have to understand something, it's not a simple system. If, if you've ever gone on to AdWords and looked at the, you know, the actual control panel, I mean, there's layers and layers and layers. Unless you understand what all those layers mean and how to basically um, filter out the unwanted traffic that Google's going to try to push on you, you can spend a lot of money and end up with nothing. And not only that, they like to change it. They, they change it regular. Uh, now, I mean, I've been a, an AdWords advocate for about 10 years, and mm. I've seen it go through probably 100 changes. Like everything else, okay? Yeah. The, the search engines, the you know, websites, the browsers, they're constantly changing themselves, and you gotta be able, you're expected to keep up with the changes. And one of the changes is AdWords isn't the only game in town now. That's right. very important. So now you have pay-per-click in Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, plus there are a few other avenues that you could actually go after. And of course, there's retargeting and there's all <laughs> kinds of new kinds of pay-per-click type things. So. But this is the one way to jump to the head of the line, isn't it? Just one way. You want to learn another one? Yes, Ever heard of a little, little company called YouTube? Who owns YouTube? Anybody know? Google. There you go. Absolutely. They bought YouTube. They now own it. And guess what? <laughs> It's a very popular place to go. There are 800 million visitors per month currently on YouTube. That's a huge number. When you think about it, I mean, who's, what's the largest uh, social media? Facebook. Facebook. What's the second largest? What's the second largest? YouTube. It's YouTube. And YouTube actually has 800 million subscribers. It's a huge number. Yeah, in fact, if you took all of the TV stations on the planet and rolled up all of their programming, they couldn't come close to equaling what YouTube puts out. They're that big. Wow. You know? And in fact, speaking of social networking, 700 videos are shared on Twitter every minute. We don't have the statistics for Facebook or the other ones, but all social networks use YouTube. So they're being played on all these other networks all the time. Yeah. And one of the other really cool things about a video is the fact that you can turn your best customers into your best salespeople. How many people in here use video testimonials? You know, because if you put a customer in front of a camera for 60 seconds, they can say things about you you can't say about you, and it's 100% believable. Because when you look at a written testimonial on, on a website, who do you automatically assume wrote it? The guy that runs the website, right? It's just too easy to gain. Well, you can tell when somebody has a real customer, not an actor, but I mean a real customer standing in front of the camera. And that's worth its weight in gold because that's one of the big stumbling blocks for people actually coming across and buying from you is credibility. Because remember what I told you, WWW means wild, wild west. Right. This is another very important factor. You notice that 50% of the videos are rated and commented on. In social media, rating and commenting is very important to Google. It's much higher in videos than it is in Facebook or any of these other areas. So this is a very important factor and it can jack up your rating very quickly. Yeah, in fact, videos are five times as likely to be clicked on as a website. It's just a statistical fact. And today, there are more than four billion videos that are watched every single day on YouTube. And if you know how to optimize a, a YouTube video, you can jump from YouTube to Google page one. Pretty quickly. 
Not only that, it's, it's a less competitive arena because most people don't know how to do videos or they think it's too big of a pain in the neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, bot and the bottom line is if you go on and you do a Google search, how many videos will pop up on a page? One or two. So if you've got 20 or 30 links and only one or two videos, if you have an opportunity to make a choice between getting your video or your website on page one, take the video. You'll laugh all the way to the bank. So let's talk about what you can do with online videos. In fact, I brought along a little prop with me, which Hector, what do you call this, Hector? Call it the Gagomatic. Okay, this is called the Aura Brush. Has anybody ever heard of the Aura Brush? It's not a toothbrush. What is it, Hector? It's a tongue brush. The world's first tongue brush. <laughs> this inventor actually came up with a design for the tongue brush, and what he did was he patented it, he actually created a whole warehouse full of these yeah. things, and then he started going around to the big boxes, right, figuring, hey, I got the only tongue brush in town, want to put me on the shelf? What do you think happened to him? They laughed him out of the store. <laughs> so now he's desperate. What do you do when you're desperate in business? You Google. You Google it. And through <laughs> luck or chance or divine inspiration, he somehow managed to blunder into the professor of marketing at Brigham Young University. And the professor was so enamored with this product, the Aura Brush, that guess what he did? He passed it on down to one of his undergrads and said, hey, what can you do with this? <laughs> So they did some research and they found that they thought that 8% of the U.S. market might buy this product. Now, the U.S. market at the time was about 34 million users, they thought. So that 8% was actually a pretty nice number. But they still didn't know what to do, so they came up with, let's they, come up with an idea. Yeah, so guess what they did? They shot a YouTube video. And actually, if you look at the video, which is still online, by the way, the it, was shot, yeah, it was shot in a pool hall. <laughs> but it was funny, and it was quirky, and it was wildly successful. In fact, it was so wildly successful, guess how many views that video has? Somebody. Take a wild guess. You get a prize. 200 million. Somewhere in between the two, it's actually 40 million views. In fact, they are the third most popular channel on YouTube after Apple Computer and Old Spice. And again, and think about it. You don't have to have a million views yeah. to make money. If you had 500 people taking your offer up because they saw your video, would that be profitable for you? If you had 1,000 people, it would be wildly profitable. Yeah. And let me put it this way. It was wildly profitable for Aurobrush because they sold a million units online before Walmart came back and said, oops, sorry. And that's actually where that's Hector where got this. That. Walmart. I want at Walmart. <laughs> so think about it. If online video could do this for a company that sells tongue brushes, what can it do for yours? Right. Well, we're not done. Yeah. Because one of the other reasons to do video is guess what? Google likes videos. In fact, they look for stuff called mixed media. And it's not just videos, it could be audios, podcasts, photos, po you know, photo galleries, I mean, slideshows. There's tons of different kinds of mixed media that Google really likes to have. And again, the more you mix the media, the more Google likes it. Yeah, and, and unlike taking four months or so to generate a page one result with you know, your typical SEO scenario with a website, you can jump a video. We've been able to jump videos onto Google page one as little as 30 days, a lot again, faster. And if you have a mixed media medium, like a blog with a video and pictures. Yeah, you can you reuse jump it too. Pretty fast too. And as we pointed out before, People that are online are five times as likely to watch a video. But wait, there's more. Yeah. And blogs is one of the, our favorite things. I mean, we use this as a centerpiece because blogs are me mixed media rich. That is, you can stick a video in it, you can stick pictures in it, you can stick podcasts in it, and you can load it up with all of these things and it gives all these rich connections. And those rich connections, those backlinks are very important to Google. And Google is gaga about blogs. And they, plus, people can them. comment on them mm -hmm. and rate them. And repost them. And repost them. So it has lots of features that uh, makes, makes it easy to get placement in the search and, and you'll notice we put Blogger up there. How many people in here use Blogger? How many people in here use, what's the other one, Hector? WordPress. WordPress. And WordPress is actually 65% of the market, but Google doesn't own WordPress. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and the reason that's important is because you see Blogger, not only do they own it, but they understand how to search it. So the, right. the, the Google bots, you know, could go through that thing like lightning fast. Right. It understands what their own product is, yeah. but it has to figure out whatever WordPress is or somebody else is doing. And we've literally been able to get our blogs on page one of Google in as little as 24 hours. It's one of the quickest ways to go from Blogger to Google. As soon as you make a blog post in Blogger, Google is already indexing it. Immediately. It's That's one of the few fast. things that they actually do that with. So if you look up here, you'll see that, I mean, we've actually done 
This is something that's really Google's doing. If when a person logs in, Google's tracking you. So anything that's attached to you will show up right away at a high level for you. So if you're not being tracked, it goes onto the keywords and you'll see them pop up very quickly. So our blogs, when we write them, we actually make sure that the keywords are in the title usually. But they're also in, they're normally naturally written in the document itself. We don't try and keyword stuff or anything like that. We just try and make sure that that's the subject and that's what we're talking about. And yeah. again, that's the keyword that's in the subject. In fact, one of the reasons we've been so successful with marketing to Google is because we don't game the system in any way. We just give the gorilla what he wants and lots right. of it. That's the best way to do it, and that, that makes us pretty much bulletproof, because when Hummingbird came out and everybody fell off the face of the planet, we moved around a little bit, and then we came right back up. But Some we, places but we, we came higher. we never left page one, and we no. never fell below the fold. So again, just giving the gorilla what it wants is the plan. The reason most people don't do it is because it requires them to do a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to feed the gorilla every day, all the time. And speaking of daily feed. Okay. So the social media specifically has to be fed daily. I mean, if you're not produ producing post on a daily basis, it's not going to work. And the kind of posts that you need to produce are not commercials. They have to be posts that people want. So if you're focusing on a specific clientele, you have to give them that what they want. It's irrelevant what you want. You have to give them what they want. If you give them what they want, they will follow you, they'll become loyal, and they'll let you slip in a coupon here and there and those kinds of things. Yeah, but we're not talking about telling them about your, your uh, vacation adventures. Right. We're not, we're not talking about the oral brush or toothbrushing or Making or, breakfast or worse, just like keep this. sending them ads, ads, okay. ads. You know, what, what I t if you want to sell on the social networks, it's not about selling, it's about telling. Right. If you want to sell on it, you do pay-per-click. Push technology is something that's neat about social media, and then you can actually give somebody some really cool stuff that they like, and then say, oh, by the way, come check this out. And they actually follow that about 50% of the time, especially if it's a brand new follower. That's something that we've been working on very diligently, and we'll actually be hopefully getting a reward tomorrow when we go to the, the JBJ BizTech Awards. So you know, the thing too is that you can you can take the people from your social network and send them to other sites. That's what makes social networking so powerful. Also, what is a post in social networking? Anybody have an idea? What is it actually from a Google point of view? It's a backlink. It's a connection from your site to somewhere else to somewhere else <laughs> and if you do lots of back lots of posts it creates lots of backlinks okay and that doesn't mean you want to go crazy but it, yeah. again as long as you're giving people what they want those backlinks become very important to Google so if I write a post that says this is a really cool thing um, whatever I say okay and then I put a, a, a URL address yeah, in check there. it out that's that's a backlink to that site okay and you can actually have multiple URLs within a post. So you can talk about a subject, and then, so by the way, if you want to find out about us, click here. And if you want to know how many social nets there are, I did a little Google search a, a few weeks ago, and, and I found that there were, were like 238 current levels. So I mean, you could pretty much spend all your time doing nothing but posting out to the, you know, the social nets. So what we do is we concentrate on the ones that Google likes. We the ones concentrate on the top five, and maybe Pinterest would be the sixth that we would add in there. So here's another secret that you want to know about. How many people think you've got to have one website? Really, you should have several. Unless you have, you're selling one flavor of one ice cream. Right. Or you're only selling oranges, you have an orange page. Yeah, but if you're selling apples, oranges, and bananas, okay, you don't want somebody coming off the search engines looking for bananas and you're talking about apples or oranges. So having multiple pages, currently we have, what, about eight? Yeah. That, that talk about different specialties that we deal with. In fact, these are all ours. Yeah. The one over there, it's working the web to win, which is our radio show, and we over have, there, that's our video. We have Social Slam Dunk, or Social we Slam have Club Dunk. W Cube. We have several ones, and they're focused on individual targeted items. And so when somebody lands on there, they're seeing exactly what they were looking for. And they're on Google Page One, and they get their own traffic streams. And the traffic streams are highly convertible because we're talking the talk. So when they're like I said, when they're looking for video, boom! As we talk video, when we're talking about doing uh, social media, we send them over to Social Slam Dunk. It becomes much more efficient that way. And not only does it get you on page one, but the most important thing at the end of the day is what conversion, right? How many people actually buy from you? 
So it's not like it was, like I said, it's not 1999 anymore. If you send them onto a page and you got 25 different things you're talking about, you're ba basically shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to conversion. An easy way to lower your bounce rate is to have a very focused page. So, so the bottom line is more sites equal more results. And obviously the site should include the keyword that you're shooting for. Yeah, when we wrote an article and did the radio show the other day about Hummingbird, Big, the big thing is today is they're talking about semantics and that the computers can read and understand what you're saying. That's okay. You still have to have keywords because it's got to have a subject. Yeah. Okay? And if yes, they can understand what you're saying, but you have to have a focused subject because if your subject is all over the place, you're going to get ranked very low because Google doesn't know how to rank it high. It's not about one thing. It's about ten things. Yeah. And the important thing is this. Most Advertising is saturation bombing. You know, you throw a whole lot of stuff up there and you hope you blunder into a bird. It's kind of like using a shotgun. Where using the internet, it's more like a smart bomb because what you want to do is you want to only fish in the pond where the fish are biting. And, yeah, and you want to be fishing for a specific kind of fish. So and using the right bait. bait. And so on. Yeah. So let's get down to, again, the end of the. the the trail here is giving you a roadmap to online success. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the 10 things that you need to do to make all this stuff work. So you might definitely want to take some notes here. Okay, the first thing that you need to do before you start anything is what? Keyword search. And not only keyword search, but you want to find out where are the, the high value, high traffic keywords. And you can part the curtain at Google and they will tell you that. There are tools that are designed exactly to, do, to tell you where the high traffic keywords are. Then once you develop your keyword, what do you want to do? Well, you obviously want to shoot some videos that talk about those particular keywords, right? Because again, when somebody comes in from the website, if they come in from the search engine, there's about a 99% probability they've never done business with you, so they don't know who you are, they don't trust you, they don't know what makes right. you special. And a 60 second video can cure all that very quickly because guess what? That's all the time you've got today. People spend about a minute on a website. And if you get them excited about that, more than likely they'll click on their testimonial video right yeah. away. Then you're going to create your landing pages that correspond to these high value keywords and, and videos, right? So like I said, question, answer, conversion. Right. That's what it's all about. And of course you're going to attach them to your blog. You have to feed the blog and you can attach them to all your social nets. Having the social nets on there and not being fed is a kiss of death. Okay. If, yeah. you're, if you're putting these internet properties out there and nobody's ever coming to them, nobody's ever reading them, it's like have putting billboards up in the desert and throwing money yeah. down a hole. Okay, so, so once you get it all together, don't you think you might want to test the water? Okay, and AdWords is actually a great way to test the keywords to test your offer, to test your campaign. Because again, if it's going to take you four to six months to get all this other stuff into action to raise your ranking up organically, don't you want to know when you finally reach the promised land if you've got the right pitch, if you've got the right offer? And we have a little Edwards special a great that we'll talk that. about later on that you can use to help To get started. You don't spend a lot of money on it, but you want to spend enough to, to test the water. And, and Steve will talk to you more about testing and measuring in a little bit. Very important. All right. So now, of course, you think, okay, I can put my feet up on the desk. Let the money roll in? Not hardly. Not going to happen. Now you got to start feeding the beast, okay? So you got to continue to optimize your site, right? You got to continue we call, to we add call content. That tweaking. Yep. We have to tweak the site. You got to continue adding content daily on your social, weekly on your blogs, and monthly on your videos at the very least if you want to really get and into the game. Those are very least. If you actually double those numbers, you can actually increase your traffic by tenfold. Yep. Then once you actually start generating results, what do you want to do next? You want to start doing touch marketing. If you're not going back and trying to get an extra bite out of that apple, you're missing out. Because again, studies show that most people don't make a buying decision until seven to 10 touches. That's a pretty big number. Some studies say seven to 12, 14 touches and so on. So again, once you have to name a number, you need to go back to them, providing them with useful information and useful touches that will hopefully make them take the next step. And it's then you got a, is that push, push technology? That's not push no, technology. Okay. Then you want to use things to push out different things to them that is feeding them what they want. Again, if you really want to make customers your friend, you have to give them what they want. It's about them. It's all about them. If you try to ever make it about yourself, you will fail. You'll fail miserably. So when we're talking about social media, which is where we're using most of the push technology, you're feeding them information that they, are, they care about. And how do you know what they care about? 
Well, you do a lot of experimenting and watch the statistics. We're really big on statistics, understanding what's going on after the fact. Because if you're not testing and measuring, the likelihood of you failing is very high. Okay, so we got all that so far? Now one little step left to go. Now you can schedule a nervous breakdown. Because, yeah. I mean, this is a mountain of work, isn't yeah. it? And somebody's got to do it. Simple as that. You know, so what we, you know, we talked about the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Do you know what Hector and I call the internet? We call it the elephant. The elephant. And what's the easiest way to eat an elephant? Anybody? One bite at a time. One, One bite, bite at, at a time, time right? right? So, now that you know what the elephant is, what he needs, now you've got to find a way to make the job make sense, okay? So we're going to talk about that, because this is the real the elephant, real isn't elephant. it? The real elephant, These are all the things that need to be done. The Rugelberg of uh, in the internet. You got that one right this time. Yeah. I love it. So, sometimes, you know, there's, cert there's only so many hours in the day, right? So to make this thing feasible, what you have to decide is this. How much of it are you going to do? And how much is somebody else going to do? Because guess what? There's only so many hours in a day, in there? So one thing we haven't been able to do yet, do time warps or anything like that, so we can nice. add a few more hours into a day, right? Nice. Might still get another 12. So if you're not going to do all the work, what's, what's the solution? Outsource some. That's right. Do some outsourcing, right? Now, the thing is, though, is you have to take outsourcing with a grain of salt, because you want to be very careful whom you trust with your web presence, because they literally have your, your life in their hands, and we've literally had to actually do some damage repair for some clients who gave their web presence to somebody who said, oh, I'll get you up there in two, three days. Well, they did, but they did it by gaming the system, which is something that now the spiders are very smart, and when they catch you, not only do they knock you out of the box, they'll push you so deep, you may never come back to page right, you one. You can actually be blackballed for life. That's right. So <laughs> that's one of the things that Google does. On your desk, there's a card that has five points on it. So we talk about the five unique selling propositions of W Squared Media Group. And the two most important ones, I think, that we should talk about, well, three. One, we have proprietary technologies that we've invented that have produced proven results. The second one is we provide flex plans which allow customers to change what's going on within the plan. And most agencies and clients will not do that. Most companies won't do that. Once you sign a contract, the contract is locked in for the life of the contract. Yeah, and, and the thing too, another reason that a lot of people have trouble really getting consistent results online is because to do all this work when they're doing, you know, outsourcing it, sometimes they'll outsource to four or five different entities. Right. And sometimes these guys don't get along well. In fact, sometimes... They think they're enemies. Yeah, they'll, they'll really fight it out. And, and if you don't have somebody that's on the same page so that when you get blog and you get the video, you can have somebody putting the video onto the blog so you can, so you know, double So they're working together in synergy. That's very important. Yeah. And again, that's one of the things that we do. So if you look at one of the number one is, we're all digital, we're all in house. Lots of synergy, a lot of communication between the team. And the last one is guaranteed results. So our contracts have real bite in them. If, 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 we don't re if we don't produce what we say, there's a consequences to us. And that's a good thing for the client, so. Yeah, because you know, when it's all said and done, what are, you really into, what are you really trying to accomplish online? Clicks into cash is what I look at. You're really looking to turn your, turn your computer into a cash machine, right? Well, guess what? We can do that. Okay. <laughs> Bottom line is, like they said, do you want to get mad or do you want to get even? You know, do you want to just take this information and say, oh, that was great, and then what are you going to do with it? Nothing. Or do you want to do something about it? A great way to do it is to actually surround yourself with people who really know what they're doing. People who have great reputations of getting things done. That's what you're looking at here. When you look at uh, W Squared Media Group, we get things done. That's when you hear people talk about us, they don't say that, oh, those guys did this, or they, got, they say they got it done. And that's what our guarantee says. It says we get it done, or you don't pay. And that's what's really important about it. So we have a couple of things that are up here that are worth noting. Uh, we do a free analysis for our clients. This is something that's very different that we do versus other companies. Before we ever talk about what you need or anything like that, we go out and look at where you are. Because if we don't know where you are, how could we know what you really need? And that's a very important thing. It takes us about six to eight hours to produce this uh, analysis. It's a competitive analysis. We look at where you are and your top three competitors are. We look at all aspects of the internet, social, search, everything. And then we produce this report for you, and you could use it for whatever you want. 
We also provide in the proposal what things we think you should do. And you can take those to the bank if you want, or you can hire us to do them for you. Yeah, and the bottom line is, if you come in and we do the free analysis and you walk away, what are you out? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. The other thing is, we also have, for some of our clients who would like to try it, we have, we're a Google AdWords company, so that we can provide you uh, $100 worth of AdWords for 25 bucks. We often use this as a testing mechanism to make sure that the keywords that we want to jump on are the good ones. And the offer. Yeah. Because again, it's not about getting on page one, what's the ultimate goal? It's make money. Clicks in the cash. There you go. <laughs> so with that, enjoy some of the food that's left over. Sounds good. Thanks for coming. All right.